Welcome to part 2 of the JB Watercraft T-Rex Paddleboard Build Series. The T-Rex is built from plywood and fiberglass using the stitch and tape method. It can be built by anyone with reasonable DIY skills and some basic tools. This board has exceptional stability, speed and glide in flat water. However, it can also be used in small to medium sized surf. In this video, we cover cutting weight reduction holes, joining panels together to become full length, as well as drilling stitch holes ready to start joining panels together later on. Begin by drilling out the holes at the ends of the weight reduction slots using a hole saw. Start drilling on the template side of the panels and then turn it over onto the back side. This helps prevent the plywood from splintering and creating a rough edge. Continue drilling holes all the way along all four of the longitudinal bulkhead panels. Remember to keep turning the panel over halfway through each hole in order to maintain that smooth edge. This process can be tedious and time consuming, however it's worth continuing as it will give you a much lighter board in the end. Once you have finished drilling all of these holes, you can then finish cutting out the weight reduction slots using a jigsaw. If using our full size templates, all of the cut lines will be pre-marked on the templates. Simply cut along the lines between the holes. Cut the edges of the slots as straight as you can, but don't worry if it's not perfect as nobody's ever going to see inside the board once it's finished. If you save up all of the plywood scraps that you cut from these slots, like I did, you'll realise just how much weight we're actually cutting out of the board here. It's quite substantial and well worth the effort. Once all of the weight reduction slots have been cut, it's time to move on to cutting the joining slots. These will be used later on to join the frame of the board together. It simply slides together like a piece of Lego. I cannot stress enough that you need to use a good quality jigsaw and a good quality blade for this process. The jigsaw I'm using here is absolutely hopeless and cannot cut a straight line. Fortunately, or perhaps unfortunately for my wife, this jigsaw burned out later on in the build process which gave me a good excuse to go to the hardware store and buy myself a shiny new one. Once all of the cutting has been completed, it's time to remove the templates from the panels. This is where you'll be glad that you used a removable adhesive. I tested several different spray adhesives during this build and I can assure you that the permanent ones are an absolute nightmare to remove. It will take you a long time. 
Using a removable adhesive makes this process much much quicker and easier. Once all of the paper has been removed, I like to remove all of the residue left from the adhesive using some acetone. Methylated spirits may also work in some cases. Do not use tips for this process as it will leave behind an oily residue that resins and glues may have trouble sticking to later on. Once all of the templates are removed, I cleaned up all of the edges of the panels to ensure that they fit together smoothly when I assemble the board. For this process I like to use a piece of 120 grit sandpaper folded in half. You do not need to remove a whole lot of material from the panels, really I'm just trying to make the edge smooth so that it will glue and fit together more easily later on. Here I'm cleaning up the inside edges of the weight reduction holes using the same piece of sandpaper. I know I said it doesn't matter what these look like, but I know it'll annoy me forever if I don't do it, so here I am. Repeat this edge smoothing process on the edges of all of the panels. Once again this process does seem quite tedious, but you'll thank yourself for it once you come to assemble the board. Once all of the edges have been cleaned up, we can now start joining together the shorter panels to create full length panels. Here I will be working on the side panels of the board. I have both sets of side panels laid out on the desk with some waxed baking paper in between them. I'll tape the panels together to ensure that both sets end up exactly the same when joined. The baking paper prevents them from sticking together. Next, apply a small amount of epoxy glue to the edges of both panels to be joined. I like to use epi glue for this, but even some epoxy resin with glue powder mixed in will work. Once the edges have been coated with glue, push the panels together, ensuring that the edges of the panels line up with each other. Since all of these panels need to be exactly the same, I'm taping the top set to the bottom set to ensure that the edges match up and both panels end up being exactly the same. This ensures a fair and even shape to the board when it's finished. Once the panels have been taped together securely, cut some strips of fiberglass tape long enough to cover the width for the joins. I'm using 75mm wide by 200g per square meter fiberglass tape. Mix up a small quantity of epoxy resin and pour onto the fiberglass tape. 15 to 20 mils of resin is plenty for this job. Use a small spatula or putty knife to spread the resin evenly across the fiberglass cloth. Ensure that the fiberglass cloth is fully wetted out and remove any excess resin once it is. Here I am simply repeating this process on my other set of side panels. Once the joins are complete, lay some heavy objects down either side of the joins on top of the panels to ensure that the panels remain flat against the workspace. This will keep the join flat and ensure that the panels are straight once completed. The next stage in the build is to mark out and drill all of the stitch holes in the plywood panels. These holes should be 100mm apart and around 5mm in from the edge of the panel. Begin measuring from the forward end of the panel and slowly work your way aft. Repeat this on every panel. Here I am cheating somewhat by using the holes already marked in the deck panel to mark out the hole positions for the rail panels. This will ensure that they'll all line up perfectly when I come to join them together later on. This handy cheat can be used anytime that you are joining rail panels onto either deck or bottom panels. 
it can save you a lot of time and effort. Next, make sure that your battery drill has a fully charged battery because it's time to drill a whole bunch of stitch holes. The board can be stitched together using either zip ties or cable ties as we call them in this part of the world or small wire ties. You should size your drill bit to match the size of ties that you're using. The smaller the hole, the neater the finish. I decided to use cable ties for my build because they are cheap, readily available and very quick to use compared to wire. Those wanting a beautiful clear finish to show off the wood grain may want to consider using wire ties rather than cable ties. Wire ties require a smaller hole and are therefore less visible on the finished board. With all the stitch holes drilled, we're almost nearing the end of the tedious part of this project. With all the stitch holes drilled, we're nearing the end of the tedious part of the project. From here on in, the board starts to take shape much more rapidly which adds a real element of fun to the process. That's all we have time for this episode, but join us next time when we start stitching the board together and seeing it really begin to take shape. Thank you for watching.